Hello there, our Global Connections family. Uh, we send you our greetings from the states at the moment, and we're believing God to uh, be able to make ways for us to get back home. We wanted to uh, come to you for just a minute and bring you a word of encouragement in the midst of all of this crisis that is going on. And many of you that are gathering there today uh, in service, there'll be some that are watching online to be able to receive as well. But I wanted to give you a scripture and just a few thoughts today of what God has put on our heart. I want to give you a scripture a lot, of, a lot of people are using today, but I want to break it down for you so that we'll have the kingdom power and impact of the scripture working in our lives in the midst of this crisis that's going on. And it is a crisis. But we're not in crisis. As citizens of the kingdom of God, the world is in crisis. And I want you to actually realize and understand today that you are the answer to this crisis because Jesus lives in you. I want to give you a scripture out of 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. And this is what it says. It says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear or timidity, but of power of love and of discipline or a sound mind some translation says for God has not given us the spirit of fear but the spirit of power of love and of a sound mind now this word given here it means a cause or dealing God's not dealing with us out of a spirit of fear but a power love and a sound mind or spirit of timidness now I want us to look at a couple things here what a couple things mean this word spirit literally means Holy Spirit, the dealings of Holy Spirit in our life. And the word here, timidity, is the word fear, and it literally means cowardness, to back away or to run away from a responsibility, to run away from something that is confronting you when you have the ability to deal with it. So when we talk about the spirit of fear, it doesn't mean to be afraid in a sense that you're overcome by something. Because we know that we're not overcome. We're overcomers, right? Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. It tells us, church, that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So this word in 2 Timothy that has to do with fear, it means to coward or to or, or to be to, to pull away from, from something that you've been empowered to overcome because you're afraid to confront it. I want us to begin to, to confront a couple things this morning. Number one, this coronavirus that's going around uh, is, is not greater than you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It's not more powerful than you. The Bible says that God has given you uh, authority in, in Luke chapter 10. Uh, uh, chapter 19 verse and, and chapter 10 he says to, uh, to step on to overcome the power or the miracle working power of the enemy I want us to understand this morning that the power of God is greater than the power of this virus the word corona is actually the word crown and it's a false crown it's a crown of fear it's a crown of cowardness that the enemy wants to bring into the world, bring into your world, bring into your life, bring into our nation to be able to pull away from our responsibility to deal with this thing. This false crown of coronavirus is falling under the feet of the of the church. Can somebody please say amen right now? I want you to understand that you've given been given power by God to overcome this false crown. The crown of heaven the kingdom of God, the king of kings and the Lord of lords is anointing you and equipping you not to cower or run away, but to step into your responsibility in, conf in confronting this. The nation right now is afraid. Your family's afraid. Your co-workers are afraid. You may even be afraid. So right now I'm decreeing over you that you are not cowarding away from but you are stepping into your kingdom responsibility in the midst of this crisis. You see, the scripture tells us, church, that 
God causes it to rain on the just and the unjust. Uh, we're affected by this crisis, whether we like it or not. We're in the middle of this crisis. We're not saying, oh, praise the Lord, bless the Lord, glory to God, and all the Christian phrases that we try to use to mentally psych ourselves out from being affected by this type of thing. We are affected. We are living in it. We're standing in it, but we're not overcome by it. We are stepping into the overcoming mode, if I can say it that way, and also the responsibility as sons of God in the earth to be able to take kingdom power and kingdom victory and run this false crown, this corona, out of our nation, out of our family, and out of our lives. I hope that makes sense to you. How are we going to overcome it? Here it is right here. He said, God has not given us a coward spirit, a spirit of fear, or a timid spirit, but he's given us one of, of power, of love, and of a sound mind, or of discipline. Let me break these words down to you. This word power is the word dunamis. It's the same word that we find in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, where it tells us that we will receive dunamis, we will receive power after Holy Spirit has come upon us. And we will be a witness under him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other post parts of the earth. This word witness, it means to give a first-hand account of as in a court of law. This is something we're dealing with. It's, it's not a religious thing. It's a legal thing. And it's an invasion of the enemy that's trying to come in. And we deal with it through the power of Holy Spirit. Through signs and wonders and miracles. Through decrees. Prophetic words. Through the things that God has given you as, as concerning authority where you live. In your family, you've got the authority over this thing by the power of Holy Spirit. Wherever you go, Holy Spirit is with you, and you carry the power of God to be able to deal with this. That's number one, all right? So number two is of love. The word love here is the Greek word agape. Watch this. This is powerful when I begin to see this. It doesn't mean, oh, I love you with the love of the Lord. That's not what agape means. Agape literally means good will. We're overcoming by dunamis and we're overcoming by love, by good will. What does that mean? That means that God is giving me and you the ability to help overcome fear and destruction and this false crown by doing good to others, by being able to take what's in our pocket or what's in our life and give it into the lives of others. That's the agape love that Paul is talking to Timothy about right here. So as you give in to people that have need, as you sow, as you take out of your pantry and give into others' pantries, as you take out of your pocket and give into others' pocket, as you take out of your heart and give into others' heart, as you take your toilet paper and give it to other people that need toilet paper during this time, that's a good will. So God's going to use good will through you to be able to overcome this thing. Something as simple as that. The, the dunamis is a spiritual empowerment. The love, the good will is a natural empowerment to overcome this false crown of fear that is trying to set upon our nation. You remember I gave you a word a few year, a few weeks ago when we were at Kingdom House. Some of you saw it, some of you didn't. Maybe Jason and Sarah can dig this up and let us see the video of it. I said that there was a couple of things going to get to happen. There was coming a, a crashing of the economy in Australia. And that this crash, even in the nations, even in America, and this crash was going to be a setup for the church. For us to be able to do good and to be blessed in return. We're not moved by the economy of the world. We're moved by the economy of God. And the other word that God gave me was that these that churches, mega churches, were going to begin to empty. And they were not going to be able to carry on business as usual because of fear, because of hirelings, and because of wolves. And we're seeing some of these things begin to happen even now in the nation, right? So we're going to overcome by power. And love. Here's the third one. The third word here is discipline or sound mind. Here's what it means. Self-control. Say that with me out loud right now. Self-control. One more time. Self-control. Stop panicking in Jesus' name. Come on, smile at me. I love you very much. Stop panicking. You're not called to fear. 
You're called to discipline and self-control and a soundness of mind. This word really means literally to recall one to his senses. So step into a soundness of mind. How do you do that? You do it by the word of God. You do it by faith. You do it by what God's given you. Out of the book of Romans chapter 12, it says, Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right, church? And in doing this, we will see faith released through us. Church, family, I want to encourage you right now to allow Holy Spirit just to refill you. I'm going to pray for you in a minute. Just to refill you afresh today with Holy Spirit so that power, that dunamis of God begins to flow through you to meet spiritual needs, to release healing, deliverance, and peace. For the love of God to be able to flow through you, that you'll become a conduit to resources. They're going to be hungry people. They're going to be people without things. God's going to bring it into your life. God forbid that we hoard it. We need to release it because the seed principle is this. When you release, God brings a harvest back to you. If you're down to your last roll, bless God, if somebody else needs it, give it because more rolls are coming back to you. I know we're making fun of that a little bit, but to get the point across today, whatever you have, sow it. And then live as people of faith. Don't be overcome by fear. But bring yourself back to the place of your senses. Our senses, our faith, our discipline is found in Jesus Christ. I remind you of a verse in closing right now that I give you quite a bit out of Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. It says this. It's very applicable right now where we live. It says this. For those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So I'm praying over you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over our church. I pray and decree today over your people today that are watching this that we are moving out of fear. We rebuke fear and we renounce fear in the name of Jesus. We will not bow our knee to this false crown of coronavirus, but we bow our knee today afresh and anew to the crown of heaven, to the crown of the Lion of Judah in Jesus' name. And I release over your people today that fresh and filling of Holy Spirit. I release over them today, Father, dear God, an overwhelming love, not just to us, but through us, to our community, to the lost, to the church, to our government, to those that don't know you. Let goodwill flow. And I release over them today, and I decree a soundness of mind, a coming to our senses that we operate in this earth as sons and daughters of God in our kingdom government authority that you've given us to bring change. In Jesus' mighty name. I love you, family. I love you. And Apostle Joe and I are thankful for you. And we just send our love to you right now. We will see you soon. Keep us in prayer and begin to ask God that the nations will open again so that God's word can go to the nations from you and from us as well. God bless you. We love you. See you soon.